All right, hey, what's up everybody? Riley here from becominganelectrician.com. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about nameplates. All right, as an electrician, a nameplate is so important. If you are working in a custom home or in a commercial setting, the nameplate is so important. If you are just like in a basic home, nameplates don't really matter as much because you know, a basic, you know, if you go out, you buy a basic TV, you typically just go and plug it in the wall and just, it works, right? But when you are in a commercial setting, a nameplate is very, very important because we are concerned about voltage, hertz, phase, wattage, and a whole bunch of other things, which I will talk about in this article, uh, in this video, and uh, I'll let you guys know. So you guys check out the website because this is where I got, uh, this is where I wrote this article. It's called, uh, what is it? What is a nameplate on electrical equipment? I went around the house and I took pictures about different pieces of, equ of equipment, like the vacuum cleaner, uh, the oven, uh, a fridge, all these types of things that is really, really important for you as the electrician to know what that equipment is asking for. And it's really, really important, again, when you're in a commercial setting because, you know, when it comes to the type of equipment, do you need to run three wires to it? Does it need four wires? And if you have to run the wires behind the wall before the equipment gets there, you really, really want to know what wire you need to run. All right, so sometimes it's like, it could be a costly mistake. So again, you guys check out the website, you guys can download the free book. All right, so we're not gonna cover the whole article, but there is one section here, which is really, really important that I wanna read to you. And again, you can just see the different types of equipment. Uh, so this here is a vacuum cleaner. You can see the model number, you can see the serial number, you can see the amperage, you can see the Hertz, you can see the voltage. So that is the nameplate. That is what this piece of equipment requires. And we as the electrician, we need to run a wire that satisfies that as well as the protection, right? The um, circuit breaker or fuse. Here is another one. So this was a, um, a clothes washer. So you can see it's 10 amps, 120 volts, 60 Hertz. So just single phase, right? Uh, but sometimes in a commercial facility, it could be a three phase unit and you really gotta make sure that you are checking out um, these nameplates. So you can see right here, this is a fridge. So 115 volts, 60 Hertz, uh, 1.3 amps. Um, okay. But what I want to read you here quickly is this right here. Okay. So the nameplate, what, what it mainly tells us is the correct voltage. Okay. So when we are working in a commercial setting, you know, is it 120? Is it 208? Is it 240? Is it 480? Is it 347? Is it 600 volts? You have to know, okay? Because the because the, the nameplate is so. For example, if you look at your prints and the prints says this equipment requires 240 volts, okay? But you get the piece of equipment and it's saying it requires 600 volts. They either sent you the wrong piece of equipment or the engineer, you know, who who did the prints, like, or they screwed up. So now the wire size may not be accurate. So everything at that moment is on hold. You gotta make phone calls and again, do everything through email so that you know everything's backed up and that you're like, no, 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 I emailed you all this information so that nothing's on you, okay? Again, uh, on this nameplate, so voltage, amperage. So when it comes to amperage, we're making sure how much power, you know, how, uh, you know, how hot can this wire get? We need to make sure that the wire is protected. How many number of conductors, right? If it's a single phase or three phase, you know, so it, it could be just, um, you know, a black and a white, right? You know, it could just be 120. So that's just two wires it needs. Or is it like three phase where it needs um, three wires? Or does it need that neutral? Does it need four wires with that neutral, right? And then again, how many phases? Another thing also is in like the serial number and the model number. So this is really, really useful. Like I'm saying here, you can easily look things up online. Sometimes you're on a job site, they sent you out this like this unit and it didn't come with a manual, it didn't come with anything. But if you can find the serial number and the model number, you can go online and typically you can find their online digital manual. I'm telling you, it helps you so much. And when you know this information, you will be so versatile. Like you don't need to ask somebody for help. You can find the information yourself. 
Typically, you can find a contact number, you can find a wiring diagram. I just mentioned here, like if it's HVAC, like there's even like things like pressure and, you know, just a whole bunch of different stuff. And where to find a nameplate. I also want to quickly cover this, okay? So when you are looking for a nameplate, sometimes they're a little tricky to find depending on the piece of equipment. So let me just read you this because it's really useful, okay? So typically on the front of a device, so for example, you might have to open a door, for example, on a stove, Sometimes it's in the very, very bottom pull out tray. Sometimes it's on the back of a device. So sometimes you gotta pull it out. Sometimes it's in the, in the electrical connection compartment cover. So for example, if it's like in the electrical box, sometimes you gotta open up the electrical box and it's, it's within the connection box there. And if in doubt, for, for this stuff, uh, search online and find the manual, okay? Um, so again, you guys make sure to check out this article just by visiting the website. Uh, at the moment, if you click popular and you scroll all the way to the bottom here, oh, sorry, my bad, uh, you go all the way to the bottom and it's what is a nameplate on electrical equipment. That's where I've linked this. And now you will see this video on here. Right now it's just an article. So the video will now be in here, okay? So again, if you guys wanna stay updated with the website, just sign up for the free book. Whenever I release a written article, you guys will get an email sent to you automatically. So I hope you guys like this video. It's about what is a nameplate. Again, when it comes to household hold items like a steamer or an iron, it doesn't really matter as much because it's just, it's just like a household item, right? But when it comes to on a real commercial setting, when they are sending you out super expensive equipment, such as HVAC units, you know, MUAs, makeup unit, makeup air units, right? That go on top of a building. Those things are expensive. And you want to make sure that the, uh, so for example, let's just read that again here. So we are looking at um, voltage, right? So voltage, amperage, the number of conductors, what phase is it? Is it single phase, three phase? This is really important because based off of the transformer that it's getting powered off of. And so there's a lot of variables and a lot of things can go wrong, but that's why as soon as the equipment comes to the job site, you look at the nameplate. It doesn't matter what the prints say. You look at the nameplate, if anything's different from the prints, that's where emails are happening right away, okay? And again, everything's through email, no phone calls, text message, maybe, right? This, you can back yourself up, but you wanna always have it somehow written, somehow documented, so that you don't get in trouble. Cause it could be a, a really pricey uh, mistake, right? So everything, you document it, your nameplates is uh, really gonna help you out there. So that's it guys. So again, if you wanna stay updated with the website, you guys can come to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe. That's where you can get the free book or just visit the website. And this one right here, I showed you it's in the popular. I also have uh, some recommended tools on the website. At the very, very bottom of any single article, you guys can leave a comment right here. Okay, so if you guys leave a comment, I will personally reply to you. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys checking out the videos and I'll talk to you in another one.